Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Data Cloud Now. I'm currently in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress, where I am thrilled to be joined by Anders Vestergren, VP Head of SA Network Management, along with Jillian Leach, Head of Solution Line SMO at Ericsson. Such a pleasure to be with Thank both of you, you so here today. Thank you so much. It's very nice for you Thank to invite us. Thank you. To start with, how are you seeing the progress of 5G across the industry, and where is the current focus? Anders, let's start with you. So I think 5G is well underway. I think we have rolled it out in 158 operators across 67 countries. But only 30 of those are true 5G, what we call 5G standalone, when you can enable the full performance of it. So I think that's one big theme today. The other theme is of the open and programmable networks, which I think is a key thing where we are contributing. Yeah, I think, I think that there's a lot of talk this week about being able to introduce differentiated connectivity, being able to offer a differentiated performance to your, to your end users and then how you actually monetize that. So there's a lot of talk about that this week. So. Thank you for that perspective. It's clearly all happening here at Barcelona and Mobile World Congress. In the network management and automation space, how are you seeing customers focusing their priorities? I, th I think it's all about the trade-off of having a more simpler management at the same time as being open. So you have a possibility of choice and to manage that trade-off. How would you see it? Well, we see it that because they would like to be able to differentiate the connectivity, differentiate the services they offer, differentiate the devices that they can offer. They, they need to build out the network, but they need to be able to do that at a manageable cost. So they're looking to us for automation solutions and a way to reduce the cost, to consolidate systems and to be as efficient as possible in how we build. But a big focus in automation. Very much the best of both worlds. Yeah, exactly. There is a wealth of data across the CSP network and IT operations that can help and drive improved services and reduce cost. How do you see that being leveraged in the future? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very important thing to leverage all the data that we have that and also with AI technologies. And I think that's also where, where the Snowflake collaboration comes in, the ability to share data across different systems we are, of course, the master of networking data, but there are other data sources that are very important too. And I think this can enable completely new use cases where you're able to mix and match the data. Yeah, exactly. And, and customers, they, they don't want that data to be replicated. So they're looking for us to be able to integrate our solutions with products they have, like Snowflake. And, and I think that's we're super excited to have you as part of the ecosystems that we can bring that kind of joint kind of perspective of you can have your data here or here, but we still can put it all together and, and automate on top. Great to hear how the data cloud ecosystem is driving value for Ericsson's ecosystem as well. A hot topic remains all around AI and ML. What role do you see this technology having across the network management and automation? I, I think when we talk about automation, I mean, we're talking about the full span of automation from very simple rule-based algorithms to more kind of generative AI solutions. And I think our customers will look to us to pick and use case appropriate level of the implementation. So I think AI ML for sure has a role. And I think the more data we have access to, I mean, the more sophisticated we can make the, make the learning and, and the actual, the changes that we make in the network. So. We have our apps already in development that are leveraging ML technology and, and, and we would like to continue to explore that. And I think the key is to have AI and ML, I mean, of course, uh, disregarding the hype a little bit, but using them all different levels as close to the data as possible. So you will have AI very, very close to the uh, far out in the network, but you will that has limited data sets very quick, but also things which combine a large amount of data in more central locations, which can perform other sets of use cases. And I think all of them have their role. Sounds like it's continuing to change and adapt here in real time. Yeah, and, and also choosing to implement the automation as, as, as close to the problem as you can. And making sure that you're very efficient in both the data that you collect, how you store it, where you put it, and not replicating it. So that really leveraging the things, the assets you already have. Thank you so much for those insights and perspectives. The excitement is clearly all around us here at Mobile World Congress. What are both of you hearing and what's top of mind as you look out on the remainder of 2024? I think what I'm thinking most about and what I'm hearing from customers is that we've talked a lot, you know, the last couple of years about openness, building an ecosystem and moving forward with automation. I think this year we're going to do it. We're really going to move into implementation, into 
deployments and, and really see things going from idea into action. I'm looking forward to seeing yeah, what's yeah. next. And from your standpoint, you know, Anders. I, I agree on this. This is when it's going to happen, when we really, really have open systems and are able to gain some real value of that open innovation. An exciting next chapter for Ericsson. Anders, Julian, such a pleasure having you on Data Cloud Now. Thank you. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green with Data Cloud Now in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress. I'll see you soon.